Hello! Well, I said the other day about doing a review on that new sleep mat. Um, I've got my notes here, so excuse me, glancing this way. Multimat Camper Air is its full name. And I thought, well, rather than just talk about that one, I've got a few others. So I might as well get them together and compare them because there's good and bad on all of them. Nothing bad, bad, but where one is better than the other. So let's have a look through what we got. First, you'll be thinking, why the dirty great rucksack? Well, it's because some of them are complete monsters, as you will see. But I'll run through them in size. I think that's probably the best way to do it. The Multimap Camper Air. I bought this one purely because I was trying to save space. It's not a lot lighter than others, a little, uh, but not a lot. Let's have a look. Weight it is 780 grams. I haven't weighed or measured any of these. This is all information I've got direct from the internet. So it could be out a little, who knows. But this is what I'm going with. 780 grams. You know, it's not bad. I know some of the expensive ones. You can get, you know, tiny little things. But it was good enough for me. They call it a three season. Why? I don't know. Why would you need a season? I don't know. And size, size wise, when it's out and inflated. We're looking at 183 centimetres long, 49 wide, and seven centimetres thick. It's actually the, the thickest one I've got. But it is an air only, where my others are the so-called self-inflating ones that you always have to top up, but they've got that foam in as well. One of the things I'm not sure, but Later on, I'll do some more filming outside and I'll have them all out and blown up and then we can compare them properly. Uh, next one up size wise, let's have a look. Looks a bit rough, I know. I haven't got a stuff sack for it. It wasn't even new. I got given this by uh, my friend Lee. Thank you, Lee. And to be honest, this is probably my favourite, almost like my default one, depending on situations. This is the Van Gogh Trek Compact, three quarter length. I won't get it out now, I'll, I'll, I'll do it later. Um, a little heavier, not a lot. 850, 780, so slightly heavier. Like this, you can't really tell the difference but twice as big. This does have the foam in it though, which is why it doesn't compress as much. I'll go into all the prices and stuff later. Um, going up a bit bigger. Standard DD inflatable map. It's actually the same weight as this, which surprised me, but actually, yeah, okay, it's the same weight as that, and it is self-inflating, but it is even bigger, as you can see. It's a good map though, You'll see them all in a bit. Now for the daddy. The main reason I needed the bag. I have the DD XL hammock. And this is the DD 
it's on there. You can use inside of it. I've got rucksacks smaller than that. It is an XL, fair enough. And when I get it out later on in the video, you'll see why it's in such a big stuff sack. It's a real monster. A quick run through the specs. It's 196 centimetres long, uh, which off the top of my head is sort of six, six, maybe a bit bigger. 75 wide, so two foot six, and uh, three and a half centimetres thick. According to their website, 1.7 kilos. I don't think so. Sure, it's heavier, it's gonna be. But it's not that heavy. I'm bloody sure it's not that heavy. I might have to double check that and get back to you. But when I blow that one up, and to stand it up or lay it down, whatever I decide to do, you're gonna see why it's in a stuff sack that bloody big. So, it's now Friday afternoon, just finished work. I thought I'd do this little first piece at home, save a bit of time. And tomorrow morning, as long as the weather's okie dokie, I'll go out and have them outside, blow them up. I'm not going to blow them up on film, blow all four of them up. I'm going to be as dizzy as hell. So I'll blow them up in my own time and then start the video and compare them length, thickness, etc, etc, etc. And you see what they're like. So that's the plan for tomorrow. Part two of this, so to speak. Right, roll on tomorrow. Welcome back. It's very sunny, so excuse me if I'm squinting a bit. I've got my cheat sheet, so I'll get the facts and figures right for you because I've got a head like a sieve. One slight thing that I updated, I said that I didn't think the weight was right for the DD XL. They quote 1.7 kilos, which seems, I mean it's heavy, but it's not that bad. I weighed it, it's actually 1.5, so it's about the same weight as, I suppose, a, a good winter sleeping bag, but it's a bulky bugger. But everything else seems to be correct. So I'll go through them, now they're inflated, and you get some sort of idea. Size-wise, the Camper Air, the Multimat one, length, Standard, same as the others. Six foot and a bit, plenty long enough. About the same length as the DD ones. I've slept on the camper air and it was comfortable. I have a couple of concerns. One, because it's air only. You get a puncture in the middle of the night, dead flat, you might as well be laying on a tarpaulin on the floor. Or at least for the self-inflating ones, you get a puncture. You have still got that layer of foam. It's not going to give you much, but there's a little bit of padding and a little bit of insulation. That's my first concern. Secondly, it is thick. I suppose it has to be, being just air to support your weight. But it's not over wide. And I find I turn over a fair bit. And when I get to the edge, the last one compresses. I feel like I'm falling off of it. Where the slimmer mats, if I get to the edge of them, it's not really noticeable. I don't think I wake up as much. When I use this, I used it in my bivvy. So it's a small space, I was contained. And I think psychologically I didn't move about as much. So it was absolutely fine in my bivvy. I don't think I'd use it in my tent. But the pack size, this wings hands down. 
as you saw earlier, way smaller. Weight, roughly the same as the small self-inflating ones. Price, I got this from Black's. 14 pounds, can't really go wrong with that. It's just its durability that would worry me a little bit. It does come with a repair patch. Um, so yes, you could repair it. You're not gonna wanna do that at two in the morning, are you? So for the money and pack size, a definite yes. Would I trust it on a long trip? It's the only thing I had, I'd use it. The option of these, I'm going to take one of these. My second hand Bango Trek Compact. Mr. Burton Outdoors gave me this because he had a surplus of them. Great mat. I really like it. And I think out of the four that I've got, this is probably the most robust. The materials just feel that little bit thicker. They've gone with diamond cut inside the foam, I think to shed a bit of weight. Not that you notice it when you're laying on it, but I do like it. Three quarter length, but let's face it, if your shoulders are up here and your hips are here, knees at the bottom, do you really need anything under your feet? No, not really. Never had a problem with it. So I do like that one. Standard DD. My other half, Katie, got me this. Really from a bivy, which it fits beautifully. I would think it's probably the most versatile one I've got because it will work everywhere. Tent, bivy, hammock, simple. Price-wise, £22. Not the end of the world, is it? It's still quite robust. I don't know if the materials are quite as strong as that. This has got like a textured surface. Maybe that's just what makes it feel a bit stronger, I don't know. Maybe it's the same thickness. <laughs> And then there's the big daddy. Not like you can say really. It's huge. Great in the XL hammock. 29 pound. You could use it just about anywhere. The downsize side, what's the yeah, size, is how it packs. It's heavy and it's huge. I think I'll move the camera and stand it up and just give you some sort of idea. It's big enough taller than me, I'm six foot tall. If I'm camping somewhere where I'm parked the car nearby, I'll take this. But apart from that, it's just too big. So, in conclusion, the XL, hammock only really, realistically, for me. The standard DD, very good all-rounder, I can use it anywhere. The same can be said for the Trek Compact. Performance wise, nothing between them. The compact obviously packs slightly smaller because it is 
slightly smaller. But performance wise, there's nothing to call out of them two. I'm happy to use either of those anywhere. The Multimac Camper Air, it was comfortable. I have reservations about it being air only. Also, the fact that it's so narrow. It's not that much narrower than my other mats, but it's the fact that you're this far off the floor. I do tend to turn a bit, mainly from like the hips upwards. My feet never leave the mat, but my shoulders come off. And when you get to the edge, obviously it compresses, makes you roll even more. In the bivvy, where I was restricted to space, worked absolutely fine. Also, I suppose, being in the bivvy, because it's a nice thick underside, you're less likely to get a puncture. So, in conclusion, if I'm short of pack space, I would take this. Anywhere, really, any situation, I would use the Fango Trek Compact or the standard DD. You can't really call it, there's nothing between them. This is slightly larger, you know, whatever you can fit in your bag. If I could fit it in the bag, I won't worry about weight, I would use the XL one. But it's too big to be practical. Unless you've got a massive bag and you're not going too far. So I hope that's cleared it up for you. That's my choices, that's my thoughts. Others may be different, just what I find. All cheap. None are super light. Weight wise, we've got uh, 780, 850, 780, one and a half kilos. Um, price wise, Multimap 14 pounds. The Trek is 20. Standard DD is 22. The XL is 29. None are expensive. But what to expect from me? They're all good in their own way. But the Trek Compact or the regular DD would be my call for general use. Thanks for watching. I hope I haven't bored you. See you on the next one, guys.